in short stories. Something. So I write both novels and short stories. As you see here, the Price to Love book that I have, this is a novel. And Twisted Tales and Turn is short story collection. Now in a novel, you can't really mix and match. The genre has to be one. And the story where you, of course, can go into more depth, but you can't really start, you know, change genre. So if I am writing contemporary, I suddenly can't make it a historical fiction. I won't be able to do justice. Now that's the beauty of the short story collection. Every reader has a variety of palettes. Every reader has varied tastes. And that's the luxury the short story format gives me as a writer. So if you see my book, Twisted Tales and Turns, it's a multi-genre collection. So you have paranormal, you have the contemporary, you have uh, science fiction. Now everyone, the readers who have read me, somebody says, I love the paranormal. Somebody said, I love the science fiction. So within one book, I am able to cater to a lot of tastes. And that is because it's a short format. So as you said, Shoma, short formats really have a lot of power. Right. So we have seen the power of the short story. And uh, there are so many over here who have an Instagram account, so I won't be doubting that at all. But also, what I would like to ask my panelists is, the, how much do you pack in 30 seconds of a reel, or maybe 100 pages, you know? We, have, we know these terribly tiny tales that were there, you know, very, very popular. But in terms of information, education, entertainment, how, can, how much can be packed, you know, when you have, you know, limited yourself to such a short span, you know? Uh, so what what happens to creativity then? I think it's possible in today's uh, day and age to pack in a lot in 30 seconds or one minute. It seems improbable. I thought before, you know, I got into internet and I'm pre-internet, by the way, pre-television also. <laughs> but uh, it is amazing to see what all can be done in just 30 seconds. For example... The other day, I got a, one of those TikTok videos on my WhatsApp about a man who suffers from Alzheimer's. So this is set in an uh, aeroplane. It's about 30 seconds, 45 seconds. But so they show how gradually he's getting, you know, befuddled. He's getting confused and he, how gradually he becomes <coughs> aggressive and starts fighting with all the passengers because he can't recognize his wife. His wife had actually gone to the uh, washroom. When she returns, he can't recognize his wife either. But then the wife just takes over calmly. And she asks everyone, the full, all the passengers to, you know, sing their wedding song. You are my sunshine, my little sunshine. And they all start singing. And it's, I mean, it's amazing to see that uh, man calming down. And actually, you know, there's a smile on his face. Then he puts his head on his wife's shoulder. He recognizes the wife. And then he starts smiling and then you realize he's not such a bad person after all because he was very aggressive and he was you know, fighting with all these people. That, all that in 30 seconds, 35 seconds, whatever it was. So that told me more about Alzheimer's, you know, than a medical uh, article uh, on a, in a medical journal, I think. So I know what are the different aspects and the different facets of uh, Alzheimer's disease. So if a film is made well, within a short period of time, I think it can be very effective. I cannot make such films, but there are people out there, there are talented people out there who will adapt to the format and give you the same kind of information in you know, very, very condensed form. Ultimately, as, uh, as my panelist, co-panelist said, the whole purpose of short fiction or the purpose of any kind of storytelling is to make those connections, is to have you sort of see yourself in the story or it teaches you something, as he said, you learned something out of it. Um, this book, for instance, I know I'm probably an outlier in this group because this I'm holding up a children's book, but as I always say to the children, uh, what they read today is going to inform what they are tomorrow. And if they don't read, they're really cutting themselves out from a lot of learning. Um, so this, in this, I have an author's note in which I say, one world, many stories, 
many stories, one world. And I have stories from all over the world in this. Some of them are retellings. And then there are stories that I've written as well. The idea is that in a very short format, this book is showing you a number of different things. One, that all over the world, whether it's a Japanese story called Isun Bushri, which talks about a miniature character. And then I asked the children, how does this, what other stories have you read that are similar to this? And, you know, there's Thumbelina or Tom Thumb, different parts of the world. One is in Asia, you have Thumbelina, which is from uh, Eastern Europe or rather, Northern Europe, and then you have uh, Tom Thumb, which is, I think, a British tale. So we have similar stories said in different parts of the world all coming together. So look at the power of short fiction. The same stories are being told in different ways. Now, you asked, you asked I got digressed with his description. You asked another little second question. Uh, information, education, and Correct. So, so the purpose, happen? you know, I mean, here, I, exactly. Uh, so as, uh, as we were asked, education, packing a punch, entertainment, can that be done in a short form? Absolutely. When you have most of us who write short fiction or short flash fiction or any other kind of fiction are usually part of an anthology or a collection. Now, when you have a number of stories, you can do that educational element. And as you rightly said, Smitha, uh, you can work in one book with many different styles of writing. So even if the genre is short fiction, the way the short fiction is presented can be varied. So, for instance, we could have somebody writing a story in a first-person narrative. You could have a story that is a story from the past. You could have a classical told, story retold. And I do do that with this book with for children. I have a fairy tale that begins in the quintessential once upon a time and ends with happily ever after. And then you have a story that's entirely in first person, which is almost in stream of consciousness. So there are different ways of doing it. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the hundred word stories. And at some point, if you want, we can effectively show you the power of hundred words. So, uh, Barkha, apart from being a writer, I'm a TEDx speaker. I do a lot of speaking and I'm also an executive coach. Uh, and one of my niches as a coach is executive communication. Uh, I can say from my variety of roles that if you ask me to speak for one hour, oh. it's actually easy for me <laughs> because I have a lot of time and I can take okay. one subject and yeah. really explain a lot. Yeah. You ask me to speak for one minute, mm -hmm. that would be really yeah. tough. It's always hard to pack a punch in a small amount of space vis -vis the other one. But again, as someone who writes extensively, so when I write my first draft, let's say it's a thousand words if I'm writing a flash fiction. Somebody tells me the word limit is 500 words. Every competition has its own rules. Sometimes the editors have their own rules. Now, because I know there is a constraint, I have to chip and chop. And when I do that, because I know I have to do that, I realize that, okay, whatever I have said in thousand words, it's actually yes. Exactly. It is possible. So good stories will resonate. It is the story. It is what we are trying to say to the story. It is more important for us to connect with the chords of the audience, the emotional chord. The readers here, they should be able to relate to the characters. Words do not matter. You can have 50,000 words and still have a beautiful story. You can have 500 words and still have a beautiful story. So the short format, the name is a misnomer. There is actually a lot of format. So you have 100 word stories, as Shobha said, that's called a drabble. It's exactly 100 words. You have quintails, which are 500 word stories. Then you have flash fiction, which is typically 1000 to 1500 words. And then you have the longer form of short formats, which can be anywhere between 2000 words to 4000, 5000 words. So there is a lot of space. Like Even in my latest book, Twisted Tales and Turns, there are stories which span these varieties. So you have some as flash fictions, which is 1000 words. We have quintails, which are 500 words. There are longer formats, which are 4000 to 5000 words. And you know what, when readers come and tell me that uh, they like the story or there is so and so thing that they would like to improve on the story, it is never a question of the word count. It's always that, hey, this story worked because of the character, this story worked because of the plot. 
and you can tell a story even in five words there are five word stories also five six word stories right so we can like those short films those reels that you watch in instagram those shorts that are becoming popular you are not watching them because it is of shorter duration right you are watching them because you are relating to the content because you are finding it interesting so yes it's an era of bite sized content but ultimately if the content does not work bite size or uh, elephant size you will not consume it right so it is very much possible barkha okay so actually i have been a journalist all my life you know and we have been confined to 250 word stories 400 word stories with 10 quotes so actually i don't even understand what this fuss is all about you know we've already been doing short form nevertheless you know see a writer or a content creator is a specialist in their sphere so we have writers like amitav ghosh who've been writing on a particular theme you know and so many brilliant novels yeah now i would like to ask you you know that uh, since these short form content creators you know they are dabbling in almost every subject on this earth like uh, smita's stories you know they are a wide range of sub- subjects you know everything under the sun in their people are writing so what kind of a con- talent needs to be built up you know to be a good effective short content creator i would like to know from all of you since you are all advocates of short form could you anybody can start anybody can start it's like test cricket and t20 chitar uh, chiteshwar pujara cannot play t20 rinko singh i don't think will fit into test cricket or surya kumar yadav not yet anyway they will in due course if they adapt themselves so uh, writing a novel and writing a short story are two different things not that it cannot be done by uh, authors i mean smita uh, shobha they've all done that Somerset. i haven't and i'm attempting it somerset mom. somerset mom excellent jeffrey archer so <laughs> it's not that it can't be done it takes a certain amount of talent and uh, their talent was awesome so but it, they are different elements a short story will need more focus on the plot you know plot the characters you know the characters have to be well developed within the short story although in a novel you could probably possibly develop them even more there has to be setting setting has to be there uh, you know uh, in a town or village or in a country or in the air or at sea whatever it may be and there has to be a conflict there has to be some problem you know <laughs> otherwise what will you write about you can't write ko uneste khana khaya wo so gaya uske baad subah utha fir khana khaya it's not that's not a story the conflict has to be there the resolution of the conflict should be there as well ki finally you have resolved the conflict you either have a happy ending or a sad ending or an open ending open ending is also all right you just leave it to the reader to figure it out or decide for themselves what the how the story would have gone i have some stories with an open ending which have been appreciated so uh, all these elements and the point of view i can be you can write in the first person i i i main character is i i i or third person ramesh suresh jeffrey elizabeth whatever it may be so all of these are elements of both the short story and the novel and yet the difference lies in the focus the structure how you have to condense sometimes you know if you are participating in a short story uh, competition which i have done uh, many many times sometimes with success sometimes not so successful the word count is very important as uh, smita said so within 1000 words or 2000 words whatever the thing may be you have to condense it to exactly uh, you know that then you have to really change and alter your uh, story to fit the word count that is a bit of a pain actually if you want to be a published author i think in my opinion do not bother about the word count write the best story you possibly can uske baad dekho give it let it gestate for some time a few months read it again as a fresh author as if you are reading a story for the first time does it is there something not 
मैंने कुछ बन नहीं रहा यू नो डज इट डू गेट दैट फीलिंग और डू यू थिंक वाओ आई डोंट लाइक टू चेंज अ वर्ड इफ यू डोंट लाइक टू चेंज अ वर्ड योर स्टोरी इज रेडी सो एज आई सेट द एलिमेंट्स आर सिमिलर बट द वे ऑफ राइटिंग द शॉर्ट स्टोरी और अ नॉवल वुड बी टोटली डिफरेंट Well, we all need to remember in the old days, as they say, when Charles Dickens was writing, his novels that we've all read were written as chapters, and they came out every week or every two weeks, and everybody waited. Now, those chapters, in some ways, were like short stories in themselves. And so, what happens is you're waiting. The, there's either a resolution to a conflict, or there's something exciting, or there's this open-ended thing, and everybody wanted to know what would happen next. Next time you get the next chapter, and that's how we built a story together. And if you read it today as a novel, I mean, I discovered that about Dickens after I had read a lot of Dickens as a child, and I was thinking, my gosh, because it worked so well as a novel, but it had been written piecemeal. There are. I was listening to an, uh, uh, a short story. I mean, not a short story. A, a person who'd written a novel and an, at a at a literary festival. And we don't need to mention names, but what he was saying is, he wrote that entire novel. chapter by chapter and he considered it because it was the first time he was writing a novel he didn't know how to start and finish and i could see that i mean if we're sitting down to write say 300 pages of a book which is whatever 60000 or 100000 words um is very different from, from writing 3000 words or 6000 words or 15000 words um he sat down and he said each chapter of his in some ways was sort of stand alone and he wrote it that way as like 12 chapters 12 different stories and then he with similar character with the same character and then he sort of wove it together and it became a novel so you know here's a technique of writing you know approach your novel writing a chapter at a time or as a story at a time so there is purpose i mean all of us have said similar things uh you know one of the things you said is read aloud as a voice over talent i read aloud everything i write also to see if the words work if you don't have you know rhythm doesn't mean only poetry even in po- in prose if you read aloud the read the person who's written the story usually you don't have to be a voice over talent to know that can tell if the if the language is working if the sentence structure is comfortable if you've used too many words that just don't go well together there is a certain music in prosody in poetry in prose and so the reading aloud is all to see if it works as a story but also to hear it as a story and know if it works so um i don't know we're sort of giving ideas on how to write stories as well but you know it's not so much that i'm an advocate of 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 the short form i think as a writer it's a great exercise like smita said about speaking it is so much easier to speak for an hour or half an hour or 20 minutes than it is to say you know in fact to answer some of these questions where all sort of digressing rambling we have a great deal we want yeah. to share with you yeah. it doesn't seem like we're able to speak in short sound bites and give one minute answers you notice that yeah. so it is a very difficult task it can pack power it can be important short can be sweet yes so- Tell the audience, you know, how, what is the, what's the kind of talent that is required? Hmm. Yes. So I will uh, answer your question, Barkha, with an example. Okay. So here's just listen to me very carefully. On sale, children's shoes never worn. <laughs> yes, exactly. On sale, children's shoes never worn. I can change the story, right? So yes, what is it? These this is a six-word short story. Why does it resonate with the readers? It's written by I just modified a word, but it is like the idea is uh, Ernest Hemingway's, and uh, this story struck a chord amongst all those. When I read it for the first time, it struck a chord, and the reason for that is. because you are resonating with the audience and that is what short creators require it's not uh, focus on the setting the description it is more about how do you directly reach readers heart which comes when especially when it comes in, in a short format okay every sentence you write it has to carry a weight every character needs to leave an indelible mark 
and that is the trick for the short creators create characters that resonate with the audience see in a novel there is a lot of space and it's important for the readers to get drawn into the world so what's the description what's the setting what world the characters inhabit so when i was writing my novel as a prize to love there are four characters the fifth character in fact the setting of the story it's set in against a corporate background where it deals with the intricacies of how corporate india works what are the politics the description the setting is the fifth is almost like a fifth character in the novel and that is how readers get drawn in but when i write short stories there is no space there is not enough space for setting and description so if i have to touch a chord it has to be something that emotionally resonates the characters have to be relatable as beeta shok said the plot setting yes it's relevant in a short story but as a writer my focus especially in shorter formats is on character because i don't have the luxury to go on and on with descriptions i don't have the luxury to describe the world that the readers inhabit more so if i have to make you read the story it has to be because the character is realistic it is someone you can relate to it is something that touches in hemingway story what touches is that it is a baby shoes which was never worn so of course the mother would have been expecting and she gave birth to a stillborn child there could be something else that the baby was born and then you know he died within 2 3 days without being given and gotten an opportunity to wear these shoes and that's what another open thing that both shobha and beeta shok spoke about open endings right there is so much left to imagination and when we leave space for the readers to imagine that is where the interest gets drawn in it is the characters focus the creators have to focus on creating characters that are realistic and relatable for the audience for the readers to get drawn in in the short story universe thank you thank you that was a very very enlightening uh, information i am sure a lot of people have gathered a lot of you know pick up points from here shobha i would like to begin with you you know for the next one um see what has happened is that uh, this uh, short format has spawned an entire army of you know writers content creators photographers bloggers vloggers and what not you know S- but not all are good you know so sometimes you know one would say that uh, this format you know leads to a lot of dumbing down you know of the real process of writing and content creating so uh, how does one you know uh some how does one separate the grain from the chaff you know i exactly. mean that <laughs> that's uh, my question you know okay how do you what happens to the real talent when you are when you are inundated with so much of mediocrity i i completely agree with you unfortunately that is the role of the reader um if a book is going to last and endure and be a classic it obviously has to be very very good and so a lot of these other books just go by the wayside and that is the truth today there is many many ways of being a writer people are writing on facebook they're creating substack accounts they're creating wordpress accounts they're all becoming bloggers uh individuals are uh, are writing on instagram on uh, um well as i said you know j- just about social media has taken over you have a following you can send your things out on that um if what you say resonates with somebody you'll have a following in that if it's a book that's got to endure i would ultimately say that if it's worthwhile and it surfaces if if you can separate the chaff from the grain um it'll surface and and it'll endure uh, how does one distinguish what is good or what is not only it's entirely personal there are some people i mean and i don't mean this i uh, to any fans but there's a difference between say a chetan bhagat and uh, and an amitabh ghosh chetan bhagat sells probably far more copies than amitabh ghosh is he necessarily the better writer it's a matter of your opinion um so it's it's essentially that you see it's uh, anybody can be a writer and i'm not saying don't be but if you expect to sell copies then you do require a little quality a little bit of 
bit of talent also. And some talent also, exactly. My mother used to say, and you know, she's in her late 80s, when we suddenly started seeing a crop of books, and this is very new in India, she says, everybody's a writer, yeah. you know? And in the old days, that was never the case, right? I mean, writing was something that uh, very, very few people were able to do successfully. Uh, but today you can self-publish, you can even get, even the uh, mainstream publishers now are offering a lot of people uh, the opportunity if you send your manuscripts to them, they let you self-publish it, but give you the the heft and the support of their publishing house. So you pay your money, you make your own books, uh, but you know, some, and for that too, you need a minimum quality, but they will publish it for you. You know, like Aleph, I know, I think publishing, which is a very well, I mean, they've published outstanding writers, they will allow you to publish for money. I mean, I think it's a, it's not essentially called self-publishing if you do it through LF. What they do is they make you commit to buying, you know, 2,500 copies of your book or something. So it covers their production costs. Yeah. But there's many different ways to get that book out on print. Yeah. To answer your question, as huh. Shobha said, the market decides. Okay. The market decides if it is rubbish or, or not. But... Uh, especially for self-published books, when you know, there is no editing, there is no uh, kind of filtration at the first stage, and then they are bringing out, they have some money, they have 25, 50,000 to pay, very rich house, housewives who've decided to write a novel. So they have brought it out into the market, and then they suffer, their nephew and their nieces will buy it, but uh, I guess very few others. For people who have done the rounds, like me, battle scarred veterans of, you know, trying to get published through, uh, you know, the big, big publishers and who have uh, been met with the courtesy of no reply at all. So I know what it's like. I finally found a, a small publisher and I'm grateful to him. So he, I went through the first stage of uh, filtration. He, I, we had an editor who edited our work. I think uh, Smita also, we are the same publisher. And that itself kind of improved our book to some extent before it went out into the market. And I'm happy to say we have had moderate uh, success and uh, a dream has come true. So to, if you want to self-publish, be prepared you know, for the worst. Uh, the, the market is very cruel. If you want to really make it with quality, try to send your publication to a pub big publisher or a literary agent. The kind of rude replies you will get, you will know where exactly where your book stands. Uh, and <laughs> believe me, I, um, I've got the experience. But finally, keep trying, keep trying. You must, if you love to write, do not hold back your dreams. I got my first, uh, I mean, you know, look at me. I mean, I am proof that, you know, you can fulfill your dreams at any age. I'm, I mean, no, I've, I've got, uh, I'm old enough to be a grandfather, but I have been published only three, four years back, my first book, uh, Driftwood, that is the short stories. So hold on to your dreams and keep trying, keep trying, improve your writing, read as much as you can to see how, read the great works as that gentleman mentioned, you know, uh, Ernest Hemingway, Somerset Maugham, uh, that is writing, you know. I'm not saying you copy them, but develop a style of your own, but read as much as you can and keep writing if you have the talent and if you want to be a writer, and one day you will succeed. Absolutely. Very, very Tali Bajao for that. Without reading, you can't write. So, okay, uh, no, same question for me. Okay, so how many of you who are sitting here have watched uh, Bahubali. Give me a show of hands. Great, wow. wow. of course, <laughs> yes. Okay, and hmm. ah, even me also. And how many of you seated here have watched a movie called Ungli? <laughs> okay, so we have some, great, three, four. You see the difference here? Barkha, that's how we separate the grain from the chaff. Okay. Right, okay. it's, huh. So it's basically the market, the audience, the readers decide, right? Bahubali, one has watched it because others have watched it. I watched it because everybody else was watching it and I have to see what is this that everybody has watched. 
so when the work is good be it a read be it a book be it a movie be it any other content format the word of mouth spreads and then you don't want to be the only one in the world who hasn't watched a bahubali right so that's what happens uh, Huh, huh. No, but then yeah. there has to be some content to, which creates that fomo right there has to be a root of something exactly so in order and by the way it's nothing i uh, you know i don't think it's a matter of self publishing versus traditional publishing so everyone here would have heard of amish so the immortals of meluha he went to 30 publishers everyone rejected it at first then he self published it and the book became a hit and then a publisher got it and again it sold a lot of copies why did the book became a hit it had nothing to do so when you as reader pick up a book you don't even see who the publisher is what will attract you will be the title the cover the book blurb maybe you will sample some pages and see what it feels like so if the work is good if you like it it will work and when you read you will refer it to others somebody else so i was at an event last week and somebody came to me and say oh ma'am all my friends have read your book twisted tales and turns and i'm so happy to have met you now please will you sign my copy of the book so she already had a book and she had got it because all her friends had got it so that's how the work becomes known when it is good you read you refer it to others others read they refer it to others and a phenomenon like bahubali phenomenon like bahubali is born yeah. so uh, you know it's more also like about trends you know like uh, when chetan bhagat came out we had this trend of these lot of mbas from iims you know writing books and amish also belongs to that category so this is that's there but there is also another thing you know okay when we are talking about this dumping down of the whole thing and this fomo so uh, this writing thing has also i feel it's something like this you know okay everybody is writing so i can also try and write so what we were trying to figure out over here was can everybody actually write you know and it's so that's the passion ha huh. so it comes out that yes everybody has that freedom to write now before i wrap up the session i'm op- keep opening it to the house if you have any questions please come forward this august panel will definitely answer i have a question for vitesh ji uh, you use the analogy of cricket yes we have the hundreds hmm. you see something similar happening in the short format six word short stories four word short stories they're already in existence yeah this exactly. you know as mujhe bhejte you, know, you mentioned right? it's like huh? a writing exercise for writers too the person who writes the six I think we should ask these youngsters. Do you think that will happen? As a hoga kya? So we are doing something called Twitter Rager. Twitter Rager. Twitter Rager. Twitter Rager. Yeah. One forty character. The people who uh, yeah. character writing exactly. That's right. So I fear. I fear so. <laughs> yeah. So if, some, if there is somebody who is an aspiring author, can you give a negative list what not to do? <laughs> Well, I'll say, please don't be. I have. I knew someone, um, someone who's not a good friend, but used to be part of the family. I'm just joking. Someone who said, "I'm going to be a writer. Everybody can write," and he's a doctor, and that's fine. You can write. He'd never read a single book in his life, and he wants to sit down to write. And then he's upset that the book is not resonating. He can't find a publisher. He can't do anything. But I can also tell you a story. You know, Shehan Karunathilika, who won the Booker Prize last year. um i was attending a panel where i was listening to him he was kind enough to attend one where i was speaking and he said that the first time he published the cricket book china man uh, i i haven't read the book and i don't know enough about china, cricket but he said he wrote the book took it he said he got 50 rejections sent it to so many places and he finally self published i'm not trying to say you don't self publish he self published and luckily somebody with power like a publisher found it and then he he got published the same thing happened with the book uh, book um, the the book called shuggy ban which also won the booker two years ago that guy said the same story 50 times he was rejected before somebody picked him up that was a, a conventional publisher did exceptionally well won the booker prize so if there is merit to your writing it's going to do okay uh whichever way you publish it if there isn't it won't just to add what he said 
So I'm not an aspiring author, but I do, I'm into the field of management wherein you have to write so many things in a very shorter format. But the point is like, so uh, the classical example is we all need to be on the LinkedIn if we are alive actually, right? In the sense for in, in our management world, we are in, on the LinkedIn portal. Now recently I've, I've read a very fantastic uh, article. I found it very interesting. But then suddenly I realized ye bahut suna suna lag hai. then I went into uh, different tools. I found it that it was 85% plagiarized and it was uh, almost 78% AI generated. Now, so, so my point is to all the uh, distinguished panels on the, on the uh, dais that how do we it, for, for anybody, now that is one question. The second question is, when we say there was a king, so the sentence which you will create, once upon a time there was a king. Now, how many ways you can write it? I mean, if the opening of any story is like that, how do you, uh, I mean, I don't know the answer. I mean, I'm, I'm a little confused. How do we differentiate what is original and what is plagiarized actually? I think you better answer. <laughs> Well, I mean, I was going to say, I have a friend who teaches children English and um, she's been getting, you know, uh, papers and today for any instructor at any level, not just at school, chat GPT and all those AI driven stories are what's scary. You don't know whether the student has written it or whether someone else has written it. So what her way of checking before she gives grades on a paper, first of all, you've spent time with the student and if that student doesn't communicate much and their normal class tests, they're getting D or F grades. If they suddenly write a paper that reads like an A-level paper, there's suspicion. Now, you still don't want to fail that child saying you cheated if they have not cheated. So then you question the person about that essay that's brought, bring them in and then ask questions all about what has been written. If they're able to successfully answer it, she says she still gives A if it's an A paper. If they're not able to successfully answer it, there you are. It's not, it's plagiarized or it's, it's something else. No, no, that is true. There is plagiarism can be caught through anti-plagiarism, but now with chat GPT, it's a whole other story, right? I'd like to add something to it. So, uh, chat GPT, now, because of course, it's all taken from human content and that's how the LLM, the algorithms of chat GPT has been developed. But uh, in essence, so we as writers, when we write, human writers, we take care that there is a balance between active voice and passive voice. Any good writing, when it happens, we know that we have to be more direct, there has to be a balance. The way that chat GPT writes, always it is a flowery language, very, very roundabout passive voice. So whenever you have a sentence, like in the realms of storytelling, short story is the king, you know it is generated by chat GPT because of the way it has begun. In the realms of storytelling. So, now, but give it just another six months or two. Could be, but then, yes. 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 Prompt engineering is how you give the prompt to the AI or BARD or whatever it is. Now, so what happens is that I can ask him, first give me a summary of this profile, then give me a summary of the profile in Cheshire Tharoor's language. So my point is, it is going beyond our imagination actually. So how do we even look at engineering? See, science will always make progress. The thing is, we as writers, so you mentioned you're an aspiring writer. We have to be honest to our craft. Okay, you, you are from management. So I am also from management. So I have written a lot before I st uh, started to write fiction. We all make those dry reports and presentations and all. The essence is that we have to stay true and honest to our craft. That is the only thing we have control over. We don't have control over science. We don't have, I mean, I don't work in Google or chat GP, the open AI. And the progress will continue to happen. But I, as a writer, I can only stay honest to my craft, be authentic to what I am writing. And as long as I'm honest, uh, the, it will pay us dividends.